It's not the things inside my head that keep me going Don't need someone to throw me money, they should show it Keep chasing shadows, they're always haunting me But I believe in something bigger What's up YouTube? Alright, so I'm just about to head to the gym. It's already 7.18pm. Haven't vlogged anything all day. Literally just been sitting at the computer. I haven't even moved. I've had like two meals. Oh, my brother cooked me up these overnight oats, which I've never known about. Like, I've always just either cooked my oats in the morning or blended it, right? You guys have seen that I do my smoothie. He introduced me to this new style. Anyway, it's called overnight oats. You put a cup of oats, three different seeds, LSA, chia seeds, a little bit of almond milk, and a bit of stevia, cinnamon, and then you just put some banana and some blueberries on top, right? I think that's the recipe. There could be something else in there, I don't know. But that's the basics of it. Then you just leave it in the fridge overnight, and you let it sit. And in the morning, you don't have to worry about putting it in the microwave and cooking it and having to wait for it to cool down because it's too hot to eat it. You literally just start eating it, and it's fresh. It's like it's just been out of the fridge. It's amazing anyway. He said have a third of it for breakfast and then two thirds of it post workout. So I'm going to save that last two thirds for when I come home after the gym. But anyway, so I had that for breakfast. Then I had like a prepped meal. I had meatballs was with rice, brown rice and veg. And now I'm like far out, man. It's getting pretty late. Better head to the gym. Don't want to be taking the pre workout and then not being out of sleep because, you know. If you watched the last video, you saw I was up to like 5 a.m. editing a vlog because I couldn't sleep. So I've learned my lesson now. You know, it's been like four times that I've done that. I'm not having pre-workout tonight. I'm literally just going to have... Oh, I just had a scoop of carb powder and agmatine and um, creatine. So then that's kind of my pre-workout without the stims. All right, so get this ready and then I'm going to head over to the gym. I'm going to bring the UE boom and we're going to get it pumping. One scoop of BCAA. Okay, finished. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I head off, I gotta do the washing again. It's like a never ending. Manaya. Oh, I nearly forgot the UE boom in here too. Jeez, that would have been a disaster. No speakers at the gym, but. And as usual, I've been at the computer for the last couple of hours editing up yesterday's vlog. So, I've got to make sure the description's in good. Okay, we got the annotation on. It's going to publish schedule that for the 18th, which is tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Publish. Okay, finish. To mention that I'm doing hamstrings and glutes today, so I'm going to be needing this pad, obviously, for my hip raises. Can't wait to do that glute kickback. Oh, shit, I haven't used that machine in, like, a year. BCAAs. It is so dark inside. Oh look, there's my shaker. Left this here last time. Thought the builders were going to take it. Seem to be losing these by the day. Alright guys, so as I was saying to you before, I'm doing a hamstring and glute workout. And I can finally say that my knee injury is like 99.9% .9 better. I'm still a little bit cautious with it. So I make sure I warm up and stretch properly. But... At least I can do stiff leg deadlifts first now, so that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to do five sets of it, purely because I can't really do too much like isolated hamstring work. So I might just do like a little bit of dumbbell hamstring curls laying down on the bench, um, just because it kind of hits the inside of the hammy a little bit more and your adductors rather than the outside, which is where my injury is. But yeah, anyway, we'll get started. So I just did two warm-up sets, so 60 and 80 kilos. Now I'm gonna start my five sets on my working weight. So starting at 100 kilos for about 15 reps, and then I'll do a couple of sets there, and then maybe increase it to like 110, shoot for that 12 rep range. I don't usually like to go much heavier to the point where I can't do 12. 12 is like my cutoff for hamstrings. If you go really heavy and you're hitting like six to eight, I don't know, 
feel like your back will just pop out and you're better off just slowing the movement down towards the bottom. As you stretch and the bar's getting lower and lower and lower, instead of like stretching all the way and hitting the floor, just control it, almost make the weight stop at the bottom and then pull back up and squeeze. You'll get a lot more time under tension and a lot more growth for your hamstrings rather than just going super heavy and then you're just utilizing your back muscles and everything else to get the weight up. So anyway, I'm gonna hit this first set and then we'll uh, take it from there. Very comfortable 15, which I haven't been able to do in ages since I hurt my knee, but I'm definitely gonna bump it up another 10 kilos. If you guys don't have straps, make sure you get them because they literally just take any forearm work out of it, which means you can just focus on your hamstrings. And in terms of setting up your feet, make sure you, your feet are at least shoulder width apart, if not a little bit wider, but always make sure that you point your toes forward so that it hits your hamstrings evenly. You don't wanna have your toes pointing out. Well, you can if you want, but it's just gonna hit a whole lot of adductor, which is, you know, thigh. So that was my second set, about to do the third. Top's coming off, it's getting sweaty in here. I've got the short shorts on from Strong Liftwear. I've got my pink fly knit races on. These are actually pretty good because they got a bit of a heel on them, so very sturdy. But um, I'm gonna stick to that weight because I literally like just got to 12 and I was probably failing about eight or nine, but I just kind of held it at the top, got a couple of breaths in and then pushed for those 12. So I'll just hit that for probably another two sets and then maybe even drop it back down to 100 for the last one. tip to doing stiff leg deadlifts is to make sure no matter how heavy it is you always keep your shoulders pinned back as you drop the weight down if it's too heavy you're gonna know because it's gonna pull your shoulders forward as you go down to stretch so as long as you keep your chest up and your shoulders back as you lower down when you stretch you're gonna feel it all through your hamstrings and glutes and you're gonna snap back up a lot quicker because you're gonna utilize your posterior chain which connects your upper body to your lower body all right, so I just did a warm-up set on the glute thrusts, and because I don't have my steps yet, they haven't arrived with all the hit equipment, I'm making do with what I've got. I found this platform to put my heels under, so that gives me that extra range to drop my butt down, and also it makes sure that I drive through my heels, and I have my toes slightly turned outwards, and then that activates a lot more glute rather than using your quads. Who you suckers think you're tripping with? Yes, I'm the boss. Seven forty-five, white on white. That's Rick Ross. I cut them wide. I cut them long. I cut them fat. I keep them coming back. We keep them coming back. I'm in the distribution. I'm like Atlantic. I got them pretty things flying across the Atlantic. I know Pablo, Pablo, Noriega, the real Noriega. 
right, so with the tempo on the first 12, what you want to do is make sure you blast up, hold it at the top, and then lower it down really slow. Once you hit like 10 or 12, then you want to bust out like three to five more pump, pump, pump reps. So basically just burning it out, no hold, just push it up until you can't move it anymore. Your glutes should be throbbing by the time you lock that machine. If you're ever going to do this is the reason I've got the platform and I'm going up on my tippy toe like that is to give a greater stretch. Now when I was doing it, what I was doing is basically leaning forward as I was curling back in order to get a maximum contraction through my hamstring and then as I was lowering it back down, I was actually letting my hips come back like this. So almost like doing a stiff leg deadlift. So I'm letting the weight carry my foot forward, pushing my hips backwards, getting that stretch through my hamstring and then throwing my body forward and then curling up. Throwing my body forward and curling up. And then look at that, massive hamstrings. <laughs> A moment of truth, guys. I've been dying to use this glute machine because it's literally my favorite glute machine in the entire world. And this new one comes with an adjustable foot thing. So if you're short, you can move it up or if you're really tall, you can move it down. Most of the other ones that I've used in the past just have the one level. So like training clients, or maybe you guys remember K-Train, Kareem, tall as hell. Leaning over this thing, he's like, bro, I can't do it. I'm like, yeah, maybe just stand on the floor, man. And then he did it, and boom, it went straight up. Me, I'm a short ass, so I gotta put the thing right up. <laughs> Set. Uh, alrighty, so finished up three sets on the um, glute kickbacks. Sometimes I'll do four, but sometimes I'll just, usually just keep it at three for that one. up our session for tonight gonna go home we've got PT first thing it in the morning so I'd show you guys a condition check trying to push the cows up kind of struggling to get the food in but um yeah doing my lean bulk so hopefully put on some size I mean do I lose a little bit of condition over the next couple of weeks but this is where I'm at just glad to be doing the hammies again
All right, so I just got home and I remembered that I put the washing in and I'm not leaving it in there to go all stale again. This time, I'm gonna be a little bit wiser and take my t-shirts out so that they don't shrink into little kids t-shirts. Yeah, you live and you learn. Maybe there's like a dry set thing that doesn't use super heat, but I don't know what that is, so I just put on cotton dry. Maybe someone can tell me if they've got this machine, Samsung. Is there a setting that you can use that doesn't use a lot of heat? Or like, do you push these buttons and adjust it? Someone tell me if they've got it. I need to know. Anyway, got the t-shirts out. To save your lives. All right, so as I was telling you guys before about these overnight oats, this is the second part of it. You eat a third of it in the morning, then you come home and you smash the other two thirds of it. So, it's fresh, you don't even have to prepare it. It's just sitting there waiting for you to scoff it down. So I'm gonna enjoy this, I'm gonna have a shower, I'm gonna do a little bit of work, and I'm gonna have another meal before I go to bed, because I only had like two-ish meals today. Something like that, I don't know. We gotta push the cows up though. Up, 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 up. All right, because I enjoy those oats so much, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna try and make them right now. So, I don't have the seeds that my brother puts in them, like the chia seeds and the LSA and all that, so I'm just gonna have to leave that out and just roll with the oats for now. Do you get it? Rolled oats. <laughs> anyway, so one cup of oats, put it in a container. Boom, simple. Then, one cup of almond milk. Pour that in straight over the oats. Now you probably think that's a lot of almond milk, but this is not just one meal, you know, this is like two meals almost. So like the other day I got to the bottom of my stevia thing and I was like, shit, got no stevia. Went to the cupboard, I was like, shit, I got like a kilo of stevia. Now I don't know if just putting brown rice on top is going to work quite the same as these rice puffs, but um, who knows. Trial and error, I guess. There's only one way to find out. All right, there's my version of the oats. Let's just fingers crossed that it comes out good tomorrow when after I take this out of the fridge. If you're wondering what all that white sugary goodness is, it's just stevia, all right? Calm your farm, no sugar, no calories. Doesn't change your body composition at all. Zero, zilch. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap up today's video there because I've gotta to go to training at 7 a.m. tomorrow, which means early wake up. I'm getting, oh, I just got my breakfast ready. I'm about to get my shakes ready so that I can just grab them and whip out the door, save myself that 15 minutes, and then I don't have to worry about trying to find it amongst all of that. I know, look at it, it's mayhem. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video, and I'll see you tomorrow.